As humans, we're naturally driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match. With Indeed, when I was looking to hire someone, it was so slow and overwhelming. I wish I had used Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform, with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Played on a field or ice or course Bear Rivers is the place Over under money line Same game parlays, it's all fine You'll put a smile on your face Bet Rivers Sportsbook is your home for chance Where you can bet on the sports you love Bet Rivers Sportsbook, download the app Take a chance Presented by Rivers Casino Portsmouth Must be 21 plus, available in Virginia only Void were prohibited, terms and conditions apply Gambling problem? Call 1-888-532-3500 Now for our story Bill Meade, having determined to get the matter of his divorce and custody of his baby son settled, or at least on the way to being settled, has gone over to see his attorney, Angus McKillop. From everything he'd understood in regard to his relationship with his wife, Kit Meade, Bill had been very hopeful of winning should he file suit for divorce, asking custody of the baby he believed to be his son. But Angus McKillop had surprised and alarmed Bill very much when he said, I'm afraid you haven't a ghost of a chance, lad. No, the best thing for you is to tell Ben Calvert you're not going to fight for your child. Tell him you'll accept his offer, give up the child in return for an uncontested divorce. But, Mr. McKillop, I can't do that. As I see it, you have no other choice. Well, then I am in a spot. You are indeed. But you don't understand. You see, I've already given Mr. Calvert my answer. What? Yes, I told him several days ago that I absolutely wouldn't accept his proposition. That I'd fight the thing through. So oh, you put your thick head in a noose, did you? Look, lad, you'd better run along now. You need a magician, not a lawyer. Oh, but wait a minute, Mr. McKillop. I thought... Uh, thought, did you? You'd be a lot better off if you wouldn't try. I'm your lawyer, and I'll do the thinking for you. I'm sorry. You know, the insorry doesn't help. People are always sorry after it's too late. I, I don't know why I like you, but I do. Well, let's see what can be done about it. Now, give me the facts. Start from the beginning. The beginning? Certainly. You mean, you want me to tell you the whole story of my marriage? Yes. Well, let's start along. Never mind. Just you recite the whole tale of woe. If I can stand listening, you can stand the telling. Okay. And don't pity it up, lad. It's the black side which reveals the reasons. Now give it to me straight. Yeah. Well... Gosh, I hardly know where to begin. There's only one place to begin, at the beginning. Well, you see, when I met Kit, I mean, before I met Kit, I was in love with Peggy Douglas. I see. So naturally, you went off and married Miss Calvert. That makes a lot of sense. Well, that's the trouble. It sounds like such a crazy thing to do. And it was. I don't quite know how to explain it to you, except that I was, well, sort of green. Now I look back on it, I realize that Kit put on quite a campaign. I still don't know why she was so determined to marry me. Oh, that's easy enough. Did you ever hear of the law of supply and demand? Well, sure. But I don't see what that's got. A uh, commodity's value increases in proportion to the demand for it. Now, you're a commodity. But there's only one of you, and there are two lassies. It enhances your value. Have you ever noticed the women buzzing around the bargain counter? <laughs> That's not very flattering, but it sounds pretty reasonable. Nature's laws aren't flattering. Just inevitable, that. Inescapable. Yeah. Well, anyhow, Kit had this idea that she wanted to marry me. She used all her... her femininity. I guess you know what I mean. I believe I follow you. I may be a confirmed bachelor, but I know plenty about the power of a woman. That's why I'm a bachelor. Well, I'm not trying to whitewash myself. I know I was at fault, if only because I ought to have had better sense than to let Kit get me involved the way she did. I've certainly learned a lot since then. Not that it'll do me much good now. Peggy's engaged to another man. Aye, I've heard. 
Yeah, Nicholas Dorn. All right, then. Ben Calvert's daughter used her feminine charms. You forgot temporarily about your love for Peggy Douglas. And Kit and I were married secretly in Chicago. So the fat was in the fire. Yeah. And then, just after we returned to Wakefield, I learned something. Something which upset me terribly. Yeah. What was that? Well, someone who was supposed to be a friend of the Calvert's told me something I should have known long before. That Mr. Calvert had taken great care to keep me from finding out. It seemed that there was a very good reason why it would be best. Well, that is, there was something in Kit's background which meant she shouldn't try to have a child. But it might not be healthy. I understand. But you see, it was too late by the time I found out. They'd already been married. I realized that the marriage was a mistake even before this person told me about Kit's background. Then I was so sorry for her. I felt it would be too cruel to leave her. So you decided to stick it out and try to make a go of it. That's right. Mm. Well, things just sort of drifted along, getting a little worse all the time. I couldn't give her the sort of life she wanted, and she wasn't content with what I could offer her. She began insisting that we move into her father's house. I refused, and that made her angry. Then we began quarreling more and more. Finally, it reached such a point that I knew there was no answer but a divorce. I told her so. What did she say? Well, you see, by then she'd learned that she was going to have a child. That changed the whole picture. Yes. Of course it did. But she must have answered something. Did she agree that the marriage had failed? Well, she told me she was going away until after the child was born. Asked me to wait until she returned. She told me that we'd work out something then. But she did say she realized as much as I did that we couldn't go on the way we had been. So she went away. Hmm. Hmm. The letters never said much. I kept hoping that when she came back we could clear the thing up. But then when she came back with a baby, she seemed to think that I'd have forgotten all about it. She acted as though we'd never discussed a separation. Naturally, she did. She had given you a son. I know. That was it. She'd given me a son. But that didn't change the basic fact that our marriage was a failure. And I couldn't see bringing our child up in an atmosphere of bitterness, even hatred. It, it just wouldn't be fair to the child. You told her that? When? The night she returned. You see, she wanted me to live there in her father's house on 11th Street. I refused. But surely you didn't just walk out the day she returned with a baby boy after being away for a month. I did, though. I felt I had to do it then or become entangled again. Had to go through it all over. I left the house that same night. Eh, I see. What's the matter, Mr. McKillop? Do you think I was wrong? It's not for me to say whether you were right or wrong, lad. I can only interpret what the law says. Go on with your story. Well, that's about all. I guess the letter isn't very important to anyone but me. What letter? Well, it was a letter Peggy Douglas sent me from Chicago before Kit and I were married. If I'd gotten it in time, everything might have been different. I never would have married Kit. But Kit intercepted it. You mean your wife took your letter so that you you never saw it? Yeah. Oh, I guess it doesn't sound like much, but it meant a lot to me. When I found that out months later, well, I just didn't trust Kit anymore. It's sort of tough to convey it all to you, just talking like this. There were so many things. Mr. Calvert's part in it. The methods he used to get what he and Kit wanted. Disregarding other people's rights entirely. You needn't tell me about Ben Calvert. That side of it I know only too well. Fifteen years as an attorney in this town have taught me all I need to know about him. Yeah. Well, I guess that's about all there is to it. Up to Mr. Calvert's making me the offer and my refusing it. You still think I haven't a chance? Not unless they change the laws of the land. Everything's against you. If you take such a case into court, the mother will win custody of the child without a doubt. But I've told you, Kit doesn't want the baby. She said so. The only reason she wants it is to keep me from having it. That may be, but you have no grounds, lad. You need to have a basis, and you have none. You think I'd lose everything? The baby and... I fear you would. And that's why I say you'd have done much better to accept Ben Calvert's offer. That way you'd have your freedom at least. Oh, but I can't believe it. It's so crazy. It's the law. And it's not as crazy as you think. In this case, it may well be that, that right's on your side. But suppose it weren't. Suppose you had a loving, faithful, devoted wife. And you'd simply grown tired of her and wanted to skip out. 
Would it be just then for you to sail off and divorce her and take her only child from her? No. No, of course it wouldn't. Uh, there you are, then. That's the reason, lad. From a legal standpoint, you have to show good reason. You have to have ground. And, lad, you haven't a one that would stand up in the courts. You haven't even a basis for divorce, let alone taking that baby away from its mother. But Bill didn't know, and neither did his lawyer, that the baby boy was not the child of Kit Mead, and that Kit herself had no legal claim on him. And the baby's true mother, Lisa Fenner, for whom Kit Mead had taken him by deception and trickery, was at that moment walking out of a hotel room in Chicago. And in her handbag, there was a railroad ticket to Wakefield. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.